you are the most important person in your business. You, as the owner, are the most important asset in your business. And so therefore, you are the one you should spend the most time building. If you spend all the time build, trying to build your business, but you're not building you, you will always be building with a glass ceiling. You know, another way to look at it is the whole airplane safety briefing. So you're on the airplane and, you know, getting ready to take off and they say, Hey, you know, in the event of an emergency and the oxygen mask drops first, put your oxygen mask on yourself and then put it on any other you know, parties that you have with traveling with you. And it's the same concept. If you don't take care of you as the leader, entrepreneur, uh, influencer, you know, and you get burnout and you have to take a proverbial knee, then your whole business gets impacted. Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What is going on, entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers? Welcome to episode 33, Why All Those Personal Growth Books Aren't Changing You. So we are, yeah, we're going there. We are going there today. We're diving into, right now I've got four reasons. By the time we actually get to giving you the reasons, we may have more than that. That's right. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> and, and, if you, and if you do get value from this, we'd love it if you would share it, rate it, review it. Tag a friend, share it with a friend if you feel like you've got some folks in your life that would get value from some of this content. And definitely, please check out some of the previous episodes. It could also shed light into you know, your emotional growth journey that could really help be a catalyst in your journey as well. And here's the, here's the reason why we believe EQ is so important. And you know, this is something that is big. It's taught in um, corporate settings like... Big time. Noble was just telling me today that every day in his news feed, he's getting he's getting articles from major publications written about emotional intelligence and EQ. And I feel like we're at the beginning of it going mainstream. It's not mainstream yet. It just isn't. Um, most people that we talk to when we say EQ, they don't know what we're talking about. And so we kind of have to explain. But we feel like it is so important. And here's why. We've said this before, but it's I, I just want to say it again. You are the most important person in your business. You, as the owner, are the most important asset in your business. And so therefore, you are the one you should spend the most time building. If you spend all the time build, trying to build your business, but you're not building you, you will always be building with a glass ceiling. You know, another way to look at it is the whole airplane safety briefing. So you're on the airplane and, you know, getting ready to take off and they say, Hey, you know, in the event of an emergency and the oxygen mask drops first, put your oxygen mask on yourself and then put it on any other you know, parties that you have with traveling with you. And it's the same concept. If you don't take care of you as the leader, entrepreneur, uh, influencer, you know, and you get burnout and you have to take a proverbial knee, then your whole business gets impacted. And, you know, we're going to share, you know, a personal story of, of why this topic is so relevant. Again, a few reasons here, why all those personal growth books aren't changing you. Both my awesome wife have been personal growth and, and, and personal development junkies for decades, literally, you know, yes, two definitely. and a half decades. And here's the thing, we're not down on personal growth and personal development. Don't hear that. We, we are all about it. And has it helped us tremendously? It has helped us tremendously. But, 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 but even within that, 
it has been very difficult. A couple of things. So, you know, Kathy had mentioned before we started this podcast that, you know, when you when you do read books, that kind of thing, it, it can impact you. Maybe even even it can impact you a little bit and maybe even temporarily. But at some point, you're going to come to a, a, this glass ceiling and maybe find yourself repeating decision making processes that are no longer productive. You, you may find yourself, you know, again, what I've got a PhD in is self-sabotage or uh, a, a avoidance of, of of some of the tough issues or whatever the, you know the myriad of things of, of how that can you know how how our our limited emotional growth and emotional intelligence or lack thereof can limit us not only personally but also professionally and and we you know so here you know again our story we have we have been consuming leadership books self-development books personal growth books for again two and a half decades and we, we just moved last year to Colorado and, and literally got rid of probably 200 books. And even after that, we still have enough books where I have my own library of, of, a, of a few hundred books upstairs. And Kathy has a library downstairs of a few hundred books. And we love them. We've yeah. grown and learned so much reading them. So, so again, we know that we're better people because of it. But we also know something else on a very deep level. After reading all those amazing books, we kind of looked at ourselves in the mirror and feel like, shouldn't we be further along? Like if we've read all this stuff, shouldn't we have made more progress in certain areas than we have? Like why on earth are we only at this particular level when we probably should be a whole lot further? And I read a quote um, just the other day that really sums it up perfectly. This is a quote from John Eldridge, awesome author. And this is going to kind of set the stage for what we're talking about here and kind of where we're going. Here, here's the quote. You can't demand the broken to live as if they were whole. Discipline is not the issue. Apply discipline and you'll make it worse. What is needed is healing. And I'm going to read that again, because y'all, that's that's a mic drop right there. This is a mic drop quote. You can't demand the broken to live as if they were whole. Discipline is not the issue. Apply discipline and you'll only make it worse. What is needed is healing. That That is such a massive, massive quote. And man, I tell you, 100% sums up my personal experience. How many times have I tried to out discipline my brokenness how many times i've tried to out discipline or out process or out system uh, out systematize my 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 emotional injuries and and that kind of thing throughout the years of avoiding facing this stuff and avoiding dealing with this stuff and stuffing uh man i again i am i am the textbook of of this example here and I didn't start to get some real traction, not only personally, but professionally, until I started this emotional growth journey, this very intentional emotional growth journey. You know, because, you know, (laughs) so often we have been caught on the whole merry-go-round of just do this right? Just do this. If you just do this, if you just have more discipline, if you just work work harder, work harder, or you just get organized or just say these affirmations every day, right? But what happens is you eventually find yourself not doing that thing. And then you feel like a failure, or maybe you're able to work hard enough at doing that thing, but you feel like you're constantly running on a treadmill of having to work hard at doing that thing and you're just flat out exhausted. Cause cause here's the thing, you might be able to make it work for a while, right? But we can all only outrun our deficits for a period of time. And for us, we crashed and burned, right? And so it's fine to be doing that, but we just feel like at a certain point, there comes a time when, you know, we just need to stop and really take a look at what's going on. Um, You know, John Maxwell says the number one responsibility of a leader is to define reality, right? Is to say, this is where we are, is to have the self-awareness of, okay, this is where we are. And this is not to beat ourselves up. This is not to make ourselves feel worse or say that we suck or, you know, make us feel like a failure or a loser. No, that's not helpful. It's just to say, okay, you know what? We've been doing this for so long. Let's just stop for a minute and take a look and see how it's going and check in with ourselves and see how we're even feeling on this journey right now. And and, and do do an analysis of, I've said this in a number of the different episodes, but do a decision-making audit, do a, a habit audit, 
or a habit budget or decision-making budget, if you will, and, and just objectively write down a bunch of the consistent decisions that you that you make in your life, some of the consistent habits that you have in your life. And, and just I'll give you one, one example. Uh, well, I'll give you maybe a couple examples of, of some areas that I have repeated in my life like a ha- like a hamster wheel, like a treadmill, and have never gotten traction until, again, the last few years that we've been intentional on this journey. One is in the area of conflict. Man, I used to be like, a again, PhD in conflict avoidance. Avo- and again, I've, I've been in leadership positions for man, over two decades. And imagine the amount of conflict that you experience you know, in, in the span of, of, of decades, that's a lot of conflict that I have avoided and which is, which is not good. That's not healthy. It's not, that's enabling, not only enabling my behavior, but potentially enabling other people's behavior that is involved in the conflict. And it's, and it's, 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 um, it's not growing and developing those relationships either because I'm missing out on an opportunity to, to have growth. And, you know, a lot of times kind of like the lifting analogy, it's the tension that creates muscle Right? It's when muscles break down that they come back and build even stronger together. And, and I've avoided conflict for, again, two decades because of this emotional, uh, the lack of emotional growth in this area and because of the stories I was telling myself and all these other areas surrounded you know, to, to the conflict. Another one, self-sabotage. Are you kidding me? How has my lack of emotional growth impacted my business and my life? Try self-sabotage. Imagine being an entrepreneur and having self-sabotage as a consistent habit and consistent decision-making process in, 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 in my decision-making budget. Um, you know, that, those are just a couple different examples uh, of another one is my, is my, is my fitness, my eating, right? That's a whole nother, whole nother example where I have repeatedly made some of the same decisions because I have not taken the time or intention to uh, face some of that stuff, face some of my stories and some of the emotions around that area. So that's three areas right there, just off the top of my head uh, of how of how this can absolutely impact, you know, both your professional life and personal life. Yeah. And from a from an emotional intelligence perspective, um, this falls under the the self area, right? Self awareness, having the self awareness, and also having the self management, right? So or self leadership, or um, I don't want to say self discipline because that kind of that's one of the categories, but that's not really doesn't really sum it up. That's what this falls under, and, I, and I'm so excited. I just got to tell you guys, we are. Um, in the middle, we just did a founding member launch for the first crew of members to be part of um, this membership that we're creating to teach this because this, oh my gosh, you guys, if here's the thing, we sat down and we talked just last night with, don't worry, we're getting to the four reasons we're getting to there. We will tell you them, but you need to hear this because this is important and this matters. We just sat down and talked about 25 uh, people that we have been coaching just kind of one-on-one in a group setting on emotional intelligence over the past couple of years. And we asked them this question. We said, you guys, on a scale of one to 10, truly, like really, don't just say it because we're the ones that's been coaching you. Really, how, how has learning emotional intelligence, how has growing your EQ impacted your life on a scale of one to 10? And every single one of them I think it was a 10 or above. A lot of them put like a hundred and a thousand and said it was life changing. And here's the thing. One of them said this quote, and here's what we have run into (laughs) over and over again. She said, I never even knew I needed to change in these areas, but now that I have, it has completely transformed my life. And I thought, boom, Boom. there you go. And that's the thing. We don't even know that we need it. But once we get it, it's like, how did I ever live without this? Because this has rocked my world in every good way. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we're creating the products that we're creating, because we feel like we have to get this message of EQ out. The entrepreneur world needs this. Um, Needs this. Huge, huge. It's been Again, we have been entrepreneurs for over two decades. We've been a part of 10 different startup businesses. Some were successful, some were failures. And the number one thing that has given me personally traction, the most traction in my life has been this this emotional growth journey that we've been on in the past three years. And that was, again, that was, again, 20 years after 
you know, we, we we've been we've been in, in business for ourselves. So, uh, you know, um, you know, again, that's why we're so passionate about this to have discovered, you know, ice cubes, if you will, yes. to just to have <laughs> discovered tacos. What what? Well, tacos. And you know, uh, you know, twenty years after we've been we we've been at the grindstone, if you will. Man, I, I want to tell everyone that'll listen about yes. about how you know the impact that that uh, this journey has made in our lives. Yep. It it's it's huge. Okay, we're going to get into it. Here you go. Here's the four reasons you may not be seeing the growth you'd like to see even after consuming all that content. And we talked about books, but really it's not just personal growth books. It could be podcasts that you're listening to, it could be coaching conferences that you're going to, coaching, mentorship. Yeah, it could be there's so many things. Like it could be, you know, why why after being you know, immersed in it or feeding your mind with it, are you not getting the results that you want? So we've got four, there might be more, but these are the four that we've got and uh, we're going to start them. Okay. Yeah. Number, number one, one is the stories you're telling yourself ab about you won't allow you to change. The stories you're telling yourself about you won't allow you to change. And again, perfect example, real this is true story. The past two to three weeks have been absolutely miserable for me. I have been in this emotional funk literally for the past two to three weeks. And, and it is, I've been in this fog. I've been in this. I told him he's like, he's been a zombie almost. Yeah, really. Like, a yeah, that's exactly right. I've literally been. Not uh, not like a crazy zombie that like yeah, runs around yeah. trying to eat you, but like a zombie that's just staring off into space. Yeah, I, I haven't been emotionally present. I've almost been not been physically present. I mean, it's been a really weird space that I've been in. And some of that is due to the stories that, that I was telling myself in the funk, in that valley. And so that's a whole nother exercise that I think would be good that I'm going to do is what are your jot down either either when you're in the valley the next time you're in a valley or when you're out of the valley reflecting your time in the valley write down those stories that you told yourself in the valley and jot those down do a study and find out you know when you when you're out of that valley and you're studying those those stories your valley stories how many of those are true how many of those are really accurate how many of those are, are are relevant? How many of those are even based in, in in logic or reality? How many of those are based in your childhood that you that you 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 developed when you were when you were a kid? And you know that's again that's an exercise that I'm, that I'm going to do and really do an analysis because here's the thing like you know like my counselor said a while back he said don't don't feel guilty about your valleys because valleys are a part of human human the human experience. So for me, as a, you know, I'm, I'm a passionate about learning, how can I maximize my valleys? If I can't avoid them, if they're going to be part of my life, how can I make them a positive experience while I'm in the valley? Not that I have to be positive in the valley, because I don't know that that's you know, necessarily based in reality either. I know some people are, and it's funny, some of you guys who know me are probably going to chuckle at this because... I used to be that Pollyanna guy, if that's the right term. Yeah, that's the right term. <laughs> that you know, I, you know, I was positive about everything, and and and, and I'm still a very optimistic, positive guy. Uh, but that's also not healthy. To again, to not look at things realistically, not that you can't be positive or optimistic in that reality, but it's important to again, like Maxwell says, to identify and define what reality is. And, and again, like my, my counselor said, it's okay to be in a valley. It's absolutely okay to be in a valley. And for me, one of those stories that I was telling myself, but again, prior to getting my counseling, was that being in a valley, by definition, is bad. It's negative. I, I had guilt. Anytime I'd go in a valley, I, I felt guilty. I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I felt like a loser. I felt ineffective. I, I felt unproductive. There's so many emotions that were wrapped around my valleys before. So imagine the impact that all those emotions had in my valley time. It it, it extended it. It prolonged it. It, it and took, you couldn't learn the lessons that you could have learned otherwise. That's exactly right. It took me deeper. And and, and like Kathy said, it, it it really 
hindered my ability to be self-aware because I was too busy being negative noble and dumpy diapers. <laughs> so anyway, th that's an example of, of the stories you're telling yourself about you won't allow you to change. Yeah. All right. Number two, you're not able to be honest with yourself about what really needs to change. Okay. And this is a big one because sometimes it's just easier to look at the surface level things. It's just easier to say, Oh, I, I just need a better morning routine. If I just had a better morning routine, then my whole life would change. And it might be like, uh, no, actually what I need to do is I've got to work on my people skills. I've got to work on relating to people. I've got to work on the reasons why I don't want to talk to people. Right. And so it's really being honest saying, okay, well, what really needs to change here might not just be something as simple as changing my morning routine. It might be something about me that has to change and really getting honest with that and what that looks like. Another one, number three is, uh, you're, you're too surface level to get to the roots of our behavior and beliefs. And sometimes the books we read are even too surface level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've, and I've ran into some people throughout our years of, of, you know, working with people and, and coaching people and that kind of thing that, that it, there's, there's some, so they have some sort of block on their ability to analyze and some sort of block in their ability to to self assess and to even be self aware be, because again because of their stories or because of some of their emotional injuries but they're not they they some people are are literally there's there's a there's a, a block a, a something that prevents them from going deep and being able to do some of this deeper work you know one of the things i love saying is roots before fruits and it's really important to 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 be able to go beyond that surface level, dig into those roots and not just change out the, the Band-Aid. Oh, let me just get a better Band-Aid or a newer Band-Aid or a different color Band-Aid and then my, my issue will be fixed. Well, that's, no, there, there, there could, more often than not, there is something deeper in the roots that has to be changed about our, you know, about our beliefs, about our stories, about some of those foundational thoughts and concepts that we have about ourselves. And number four, Number four reason why you may not be seeing the growth you'd like to see, even with consuming all the content, is you might not be taking the time to assimilate and implement, right? If you're treating the books like a checklist, if you've got a stack of books a foot high, right? Like we always do. We have books everywhere at our house. If you've got a stack of books or you're listening to audio after audio after audio and you're just going through them. You're checking them off. You're reading it. You're, you've got a great reading habit maybe, but that's a very different thing than actually taking time to assimilate the information. Have you taken time and said, Hmm, let me just sit and think about that. Let me write down the ways that this is applicable to me. Let me write down four things, two things, one thing that I could do, or I could change and then allowing yourself the time to actually implement. Guys, here's the thing. Change takes time. It's not just because you just because you read a book doesn't mean that you have changed, doesn't mean that you have grown, doesn't mean anything. It just meant you read the words on the paper. It's when we actually sit and take the time and make it a part of us, make it a part of ourselves and look at ourselves and say, well, what needs to go? What, what do I need to add? What do I, what mindset needs to be adjusted? And then allowing yourself the time to do it, the time to work it into your schedule, the time to work it into your routines, to work it into your life, to work it into your character. That's what brings change. Sometimes it's better to slow down uh, we call it slow down to speed up. Sometimes it's better to slow down to actually get the results that you want. If you're just flying through life, if you're flying through the through the material, if you're flying through the books and you're not taking the time to do it, it's like, why? It, there's no Scooby snack. There's no um, participation medal at the end of your life for the person who read the most books. Like that's not the goal. The goal isn't to say I read the most books. I think that's my opinion. I think the goal is who changed the most, who grew, how, how much did you grow? You know, are you living your life to your fullest potential? Um, and again, not saying that you shouldn't read books, but I am saying 
If you're not seeing the change that you would like to be seeing in yourself, you just might need to slow down to speed up. So make sure that as you're, you know, maybe potentially going back through this, reviewing this, take some notes and reflect on some of these points and really see is there one of these points that stands out that you can that you can work on that you can do do some of the exercises that we talk about and really track your growth. And, and I'd love it too if you guys would, you know, share your your takeaways. You know, again, please rate and review. Uh, the podcast, the YouTube channel, put your comments in there. Send and, us an email. We want to hear. We want to hear from you. Info at eqforentrepreneurs.com. And then we've got our, our Facebook group. Yeah, we've got a Facebook group, um, Emotionally Intelligent Entrepreneur. It's it's a free Facebook group. You can join there. Um, we're just kind of getting that up and running. But we would love to hear from you guys on your journey. And uh, how's it going? If, you, if you've got questions or topics you'd like us to address on here, uh, shoot us a message, go to eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash ask away. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, we'd love to be a part of helping create emotionally healthy entrepreneurs in an emotionally healthy culture. Emotionally healthy people help heal other emotionally healthy people. Talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.